Well, we made it. That's a 20 foot log on a 10 foot, five inch cut Woodland Mills HM130 Max with the Woodlander trailer. Uh, in a perfect world, I would have two extensions on this. I'd cut this 20 footer without a problem, but uh, that's not the case. This is a 10 foot, five inch maximum cut length. Uh, sawmill that is, and so we're gonna try to make it work like many of you guys would do, make it work with what you've got. I want a 20 foot beam for my project that I'm doing out at the sawmill. You guys would have seen that extension on the roof that I talked about before. That's what I need this beam for. So despite the fact that it was a bit of an ordeal getting it here, getting it up onto uh, the sawhorses and figure it out exactly as it needs to be, it is here, it is ready to be cut. Now this isn't something I do every day. In fact, I've never cut a log this long on this short of a trailer. And so we're gonna see how it works. Here's my idea at the very least. I'm gonna cut the maximum length. So it'll probably make its way to about here. That'll be give or take about 10 foot, five inches of, of, uh, of material I remove. And then what I'll do is I will, um, I'll rotate the log. Uh, then I'll do the same thing on the other three sides. Ultimately, what I hope to have is I have this side of the log completely um, removed of four sides. I can't, if you will. And then on this side, I'll push it down and remove the four sides on this side and hope I can shim it up somehow so that they're even. At least that's the idea. The alternative idea, and I should probably scratch my brain a bit more about this before I start cutting, is that I cut this whole side, just the one side, and then I push the log down and I continue cutting. And then I rotate the whole thing. I cut one side up to about here, push the log down, cut the rest of the way, rotate. I don't know if I'm gonna do that because that's a lot of down and back pushing and, and bringing back with the log. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that, but uh, I'll figure it out real quick. Anyways, glad you guys are here. Let's get down to it. If you live in Canada, these brushes get used quite often and uh, well, they're multi-purpose depending on the time of year, I suppose.
All right, guys. Well, so far, so good. We got two sides that are squared up, and uh, we just have to work on the last sides, uh, one and two. Anyways, one important thing here, the reason I shut off the machine is to show you this important thing. If we have a look at this log here, you'll notice it's resting right there, the bark right on the log bunk. If we look down here, though, because we've removed this side, we've removed the bark right here, there's a gap right there. And likewise, there's a gap there, but it's sitting here. If you're not paying attention, because I've done this before, if you're not paying attention and you make your next cut, essentially what you're doing is you're going to have this end of the log that'll end up being a, a lesser dimension than that end, so it'll be tapered. And that's going to throw off your whole beam. You'll be, uh, you'll be not happy with yourself after going through all this effort. And so what I'm going to do, <clears throat> instead of shimming up that side and trying to, uh, trying to make it so it's equal with this end, I'm simply going to, if we look under here, Let's have a look up there. See the flat side? Look up there. See that flat side? Nope, not there. I'm gonna push it that way until the uh, until the bark side is essentially overhanging uh, the log bunk. So essentially the uh, cut side will be right on top of this bunk here.
I'm going to show you guys what pure joy looks like. There's one little ounce of joy. I tell you, they bite the back of your neck and it just kills you. There's one coming in. You son. Put you right in the ground. All right, guys. Well, despite the fact that the bugs are out, we're still making it happen here. You guys would have saw me just a few minutes ago take the log off the sawmill. Uh, I took it off and put it onto the ground and rotated it. I had thoughts of actually just pushing the whole log so it hung out the back and then cutting the uh, cutting the far end of it. The only the only reason I decided against that is I'd then have to move all my sawhorse set up out here. And it was already nice out there. I had lots of room to work, so I figured take it down, rotate it best I could, put it back. Now, you also would have seen me a few minutes ago with my level. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that this level here or this plane here is level to match the plane of the saw bunks because these are level as well. That way when the sawmill moves down and starts cutting this section of the log, it's going to essentially follow that same plane all the way through. That way you won't see a beam that goes like this or the other way. So you saw me leveling that there. Now I also made sure that the, uh, the uh, end of the log here is level this way. Alternatively, I could have taken a square and made sure that it was at 90 degrees right here. That way, when I'm cutting, just the same way, um, the cut is uh, continuous essentially. It looks continuous. It doesn't look like I had a mill that was too short for the log, which is obviously the case. Anyways, we uh, also measured here just a second ago. I threw the level up here just because I wanted to know what height this was in proximity to the log bunks. So I threw that up there, took a measurement from there to there. And now that is the measurement I'll set the sawmill at. We'll make that cut. And if all is set up well, it should look like it is continuous. At least that's the hope. And if it's not, well, that's a problem. One thing I'm noticing here as well, um, I didn't really account for this. You'll notice this right here. Well, the sawmill is only going to cut to about there. So there's going to be a little bit left over here. Um, because everything's set up, I'll probably leave the log, but I just have to remember, uh, I'm going to have to eventually push it back just to cut that little six inch bit. Uh, kind of overlook that, but you guys can see I have room to do it. Uh, what the heck, maybe I'll push it right now.
Well guys, there we have it. We took a 20 foot log. In fact, it's just a little bit longer than 20 feet. And uh, we made it into a 20 foot beam and that's on a 10 foot five inch cut HM 130 Max with the Woodlander trailer. So it is completely possible. Now obviously the tractor did a lot of the heavy lifting. In fact, the log was so heavy at one point, I had to use it just to push it down because I couldn't get enough uh, couldn't get enough energy into it to uh, move it. Anyways, if you don't have a tractor, is this possible? Probably, it's just gonna take a little bit more creative thinking. I think instead of taking it off the mill and turning it around with a tractor, I could have also had another set of these um, sawhorses or in fact, just use those ones and put it at this end. Then when I pushed it back, it would have gone onto the sawhorses again in order to cut the one end. Probably something I'll try in the future, but I thought because I had the tractor here, I could just lift the log off and turn it just as well. So overall, not too bad. Uh, if we have a look at the cut, it's pretty good. You know, <clears throat> this is where the uh, the two the two parts uh, connected. You guys can see flush here, maybe about an eighth, not even an eighth, a little less right here. Uh, that's just because for whatever reason, it wasn't perfectly square. And if you can imagine, um, holding a level this way to try to make it, uh, to try to make it, um, level. It's not exactly accurate. So we'll, uh, we'll call that good. Even up here, you can, you can see nice and nice, nice and flush here. Here's really, really close. Just a little bit too deep of a cut on the chainsaw, maybe a 30 second there, but overall it turned out quite well. And that's going to serve a great purpose for me with that new, uh, lumber shed edition. And that way, uh, this sawmill in fact, won't be sitting here. It'll be sitting under this beam out there in the red pine forest. So overall, anything's possible. You got to think things through and give it a try from time to time. You never know what you're going to find out. And I can certainly tell you a 20 foot, 20 foot beam from a 20 foot log will fit on this size sawmill. Guys, I appreciate you watching. It is still hotter than blazes out here. The bugs are still biting, but I'm still happy to be out here. Glad you guys joined me. See you next time.